A master of stealthy stalking, she's got the perfect camouflage for an ambush. She lies in wait for the rat to get within striking range. Times are tough, especially for this mother. She has cubs to feed. Her son, Kumal, is eight months old and no longer suckling milk. He needs fresh meat. Kumal has watched his mother hunt since he was only five months old. And one day, he will have to provide for himself. In the meantime, he and his sister, Mitra, can eat like kings. This deer will keep the family content for the next few days. At this age, Kumal and Mitra are totally dependent on their mother for food while their father relentlessly protects them and his territory against intruders. In a takeover, a new male may kill the cubs to sire his own. For now, the jungle is their playground, and Kumal and Mitra spend their days blissfully unaware of the dangers that lie ahead. Now a month old, the young python senses sharpen. Success will depend on doing a few things right. First, find prey of an appropriate size. Then, approach patiently and in complete silence. The strike was perfectly timed and right on target. Just one small problem, a dental problem. The young snake's teeth, designed to hook onto prey and prevent it from escaping, are still too puny to get the job done. Better luck next time. Meanwhile, not far away, one of his brothers is trying his luck. He tastes the air for the mouse's location.
The mouse is held fast. Let the coiling begin. It's a big step for this young rock python. All it means, though, is that he'll survive a little longer. As the summer draws to a close, the creatures of the Western Ghats seek out shelter to prepare for the rainy months ahead. A rat snake heads deep into the forest. But Raja's on a different mission. It's been more than a month since he last ate. The rat snake slides right into his trap. Raja's fangs take their deadly hold, shooting a dose of neurotoxic venom into his quarry. His fangs gather up the meal step by step and inch by inch, feeding it down his long, straight digestive tract. King Cobras can't chew. It's all in the gulp. The gliding tree frog lives almost exclusively in the treetops of dense tropical jungles. Hundreds of feet above the forest floor, the tree frog spends its days ambling through the canopy along vines and branches. It uses its large sticky hands and feet to grip onto any available foliage. At this height, any misplaced step could be fatal. So slow and steady is the game. But falling to their death is not the tree frog's only concern. The canopy is also home to a deadly predator, the tree boa. It is thin, lightweight, and lightning fast. The sure-footed tree frog is an easy target. The snake moves effortlessly through the branches, closing in on the frogs. With nowhere to hide, the frogs take a leap of faith. As they plummet toward the forest floor, they extend their hands and feet to unravel their large, extensive webbing. They are not so much flying as falling with style. The thin layer of skin between their fingers and toes acts like a parachute. Lateral skin flaps along their arms and legs also catch the air as they free fall. This increased surface area provides enough air resistance to slow an otherwise fatal descent into a controlled glide. Like a skydiver, the frog makes small, subtle movements to steer its way to safety, up to 50 feet away. 
Their flexible skeletons are modified to absorb the shock on landing. While their oversized sticky toe pads once again grip on for dear life. With the snake left high and dry, the gliding tree frog disappears back into the jungle. It's dawn in late June. The end of the dry season in southern India. Hidden in the jungle. An iconic creature stirs. A stunning Bengal tigress. This is Rana. At 10 feet long, from nose to tail, she's 300 pounds of sleek muscle, power, and experience. She's the mother of three hungry cubs. At nine months old, they've been weaned for about three months. Now, they eat a diet made up entirely of meat, which Rana still has to catch for them and she hasn't brought home any food for nearly two weeks. If her cubs are to thrive, Rana must make a kill, and soon. A large water hole lies in the middle of Rana's territory. By June, the end of the dry season, this is one of the few places left to find a drink. But for prey species, moving from the shelter of the forest to the water's edge leaves them vulnerable. Hidden dangers lurk. Mugger crocodiles. They can grow over 12 feet long and are the perfect ambush predators. Motionless and perfectly camouflaged, they can wait for hours for an opportunity to snatch their prey. The simple act of drinking is risky. It's much harder to keep an eye out for approaching danger. Visiting the waterhole together provides greater security. With more eyes, some can watch their backs while others quench their thirst. All these animals would make a fine meal for a tiger. A langur alarm call rings out. Like crocodiles, tigers are ambush predators. But this water hole is too exposed to make a good hunting ground. So she just saunters in the langurs can relax. This morning, she's here to drink, just like everybody else. Rats were a permanent fixture of prison life, adding to the misery and squalor of the living conditions. The people may have gone, but the prison's ruins still offer hiding places to rodents. The rodents perform an important role in the island's ecology. Many of the forest trees rely on spiny rats for propagation. Cracking the shells allows the seeds to germinate, and by catching their finds, the rodents help to distribute the seeds around the forest. But these gardeners are themselves on the forest menu. Their prey for pretty much every large predator on the island. Having failed to snare a capuchin, the female boa is on the hunt again. Like many snakes, she has a sixth sense when it comes to hunting. She's able to detect the warmth of her prey even if she can't see them. And with every flick of her tongue, 
The boa picks up scent molecules from the surrounding environment. Guided by heat and scent, she can track her quarry even on the darkest night. She's locked on to her target. A master of stealthy stalking, she's got the perfect camouflage for an ambush. She lies in wait for the rat to get within striking range. Her sharp teeth lock into the rat. Before it has the chance to fight back, she throws her coils around it. She kills by crushing, squeezing the rat so hard it stops the blood flow. Death comes quickly. The rat is swallowed whole. It will take her a week or so to digest her meal. <laughs> 